Today is the 15th of October. Uh, we're starting beet harvest. Uh, I'm standing here in a field that looks probably different than what we've seen before. Behind me is where we've been standing before in the field that has been growing all year long. Today we're in harvest, so where I'm standing is we're actually the first part of harvest. Uh, it's called defoliation. We take the tops off. It's a three-part process for harvest. Defoliation, where we take the tops off, digging and lifting the beets and loading them in the truck. And the third part is called hauling. Why do we wait until the 15th of October for beet harvest? Uh, twofold. The first part is the plant is starting to mature and store lots of sugar. With the days getting shorter and the nights getting longer and cooler, the beets signal to themselves that they need to store sugar, which makes them uh, put more sugar into the plant instead of uh, making size. That's the first part. The second part is, like I said before, the days are cool, the nights are even cooler, and the beets will store in these great big piles. If it's too hot, they would just rot, and we would lose all the sugar in the pile, so we have to wait until the days and the nights get cool so they can store very well until they process them between now and the middle part of January. The defoliator has three drums which rotate with the power of the tractor. They spin down to the field. The first part knocks the tops off, and there's two drums behind them that actually are rubber that go right over the row and clean the row so all these tops don't go up in the digger and cause this uh, plugging and uh, problems with the harvesting machine. And the third part in the back is a set of knives that go along and they're set to take about a quarter of an inch off the top of the beet so that they uh, don't regrow in the pile. Uh, let's see how the machine works. I'll go run it down to the field about a ways and you can see it actually operating. We've seen the machine run. Uh, you can see how the difference in the beats where they haven't been topped and where they are. Uh, I just wanted to show you what the blades do. The blades actually just cut the top of that beat off and make them nice and flat and square. Uh, this is called the crown of the beet. Uh, if we didn't take it off, it would regrow in the pile and then it would use sugar that's stored and we would lose the sugar so we wouldn't have as much to sell. So we want to make sure those are taken off. At the turn of the century when beets were introduced into this country, everything was done by hand. Uh, the first thing when harvest came along, they had a team of horses that walked down between the rows with a machine called a beet puller. And basically all it did was just loosen the beets up. So once the beets were loosened, uh, everybody had a beet knife. It was a blade with a hook on it. You reached down there, you hooked the beets, you lifted it up, topped it off like that and you laid it in a pile. And then you come along with a beet fork that we've seen before, took those and loaded it onto a truck and then hauled it to the piles. So everything was done mechanically. A lot of the times each farmer had 15 acres of beets and we would start the first week in October and go th clear through Thanksgiving because everything had to be done by hand. A very labor intensive operation. Okay, now that I've showed you how the old timers do harvest, uh, let's go see how the modern day farmer uses machinery uh, to dig their beets. Uh, let's go look at the beet digger. Here we are standing here by the beet harvester or the beet digger that sometimes it's referred to because it actually goes into the ground and actually digs the beets out of the ground. It uses these wheels right here that are set. I can open V. The beets come in there and it just lifts them right out of the ground and then there are wheels behind here that send them into the machine where there's slats where the dirt can fall through and the beets get cleaned up and the dirt stays in the ground and the beets go into the cart or it goes into a truck that we're going to have come beside and we're going to load into. Okay, let's pretend this beet is in the ground and these wheels are going to come along and what they're going to do is they're going to go on each side in the ground and actually just lift this thing out of the ground and carry it back and then there'll be some kickers in the back that are actually going to push that back into the machine so that it can be cleaned up and loaded into the truck.
Now that we've got the truck loaded, the beet harvester, let's go to the receiving station where all the area farmers bring their beets to be stored until they're ready for processing. Can you guess what's behind me? It's a great big pile of beets. All the farmers have brought in their beets to this location to be stored until it's time for them to be processed. Uh, the farmers come along with their trucks, they weigh them, and then they're taken to this platform beside me where they are elevated, the beets are elevated, they're cleaned one more time of all the dirt and debris that has accumulated on them, and then they're gently taken to the top of this pile and stored. Uh, each farmer has probably four or five trucks running, delivering the beets just like we are. Uh, from here, the beets are stored until it's time for them to be processed. Uh, in about a month and a half, these beets will be taken to the factory and processed, and that's our next step. So in a couple of weeks, we'll probably go to chance to see the factory operate and see these beets turned into white granular sugar that we use in table sugar and also in cookies and, and cakes.